I was the shadow of the wax wing slain by the false azure and the window pane. I was the smudge of ashen fluff, and I lived on, flew on in the reflected sky. And from the inside, too, I duplicate myself, my lamp, and apple on a plate. Uncurtaining the night, I'd let dark glass hang all the furniture above the grass. And how delightful when a fall of snow covered my glimpse of lawn and reached up so as to make chair and bed exactly stand upon that snow out in that crystal land. Retake the falling snow, each drifting flake, shapeless and slow, unsteady and opaque, a dull dark white against the day's pale white, and abstract larches in the neutral light, and then the gradual and dual blue, as night unites the viewer and the view, and in the morning diamonds of frost express amazement whose spurred feet have crossed, from left to right the blank page of the road, reading from left to right in winter's code, a dot, an arrow pointing back, repeat, dot, arrow pointing back, a pheasant's feet, torcated beauty, sublimated grouse, finding your china right behind my house. Was he in Sherlock Holmes, the fellow whose tracks pointed back when he reversed his shoes? All colors made me happy, even gray. My eyes were such that literally they took photographs whenever I'd permit, or with a silent shiver, order it. Whatever in my field of vision dwelt, an indoor scene, hickory leaves, the svelte, stilettos of frozen still aside, was printed on my eyelids neither side, where it would tarry for an hour or two, and while this lasted all I had to do was close my eyes to reproduce the leaves, or indoor scene, or trophies of the eaves. I cannot understand why from the lake I could make out our front porch when I take, like road to school, whilst now, although no tree has intervened, I look but fail to see even the roof. Maybe some quirk in space has caused a fold or furrow to displace. The fragile vista, the frame house between Goldsworth and Wordsmith on its square of green. I had a favorite young shagbark there, with ample dark jade leaves and a black spare, vermiculated trunk. The setting sun bronzed the black bark around which, like undone, garlands, the shadow of the foliage fell. It is now stout and rough, it has done well. White butterflies turn lavender as they pass through its shade, or gently seem to sway, the phantom of my little daughter's swing. The house itself is much the same, one wing. We've had revamped. There's a solarium. There's a picture window flanked with fancy chairs. TV's huge paperclip now shines instead of the stiff vein so often visited by the naive, the gauzy mockingbird retelling all the programs she had to herd, switching from chippo chipper to a clear, to wee to wee, then rasping out, come here, come here, come here, flirting her tail aloft, or gracefully indulging in a soft, upward hop-flop, and instantly, to wee, returning to her perch, the new TV. I was an infant when my parents died, they were both ornithologists, I've tried, so often to evoke them that today I had a thousand parents. Sadly they dissolve in their own virtues and recede, but certain words, chance words I hear or read, such as bad heart, always to him refer, and cancer of the pancreas to her. A preterist, one who collects cold nests, here was my bedroom, now reserved for guests, here tucked away by the Canadian maid, I listened to the buzz downstairs and prayed for everybody to always wail. Uncles and aunts, the maid, her niece Adele, who'd seen the Pope, people and books, and God. I was brought up by dear, bizarre Aunt Maud, a poet and a painter with a taste for realistic objects interlaced with grotesque growths and images of doom. She lived to hear the next babe cry, her room, we kept intact. It's trivia create a still life in her style, the paperweight of convex glass enclosing a lagoon. The verse book open at the index, moon, moonrise, moor, moral, the forlorn guitar, the human skull, and from the local star, a curio. Red Sox beat Yanks five to four on Chapman's homer, thumb tacked to the door. My god died young. The tree I found, degrading in its premises unsound. No free man needs a god. But was I free? 
How fully I felt nature glued to me, how my childish palate loved the taste, half fish, half money of the golden paste. My picture book was at an early age, the painted parchment paper in our cage, mauve rings around the moon, blood orange sun, twin iris, and that rare phenomenon, the Aradul, when beautiful and strange in a bright sky above a mountain range. One opal cloudlet in an oval form reflects the rainbow of a thunderstorm, which in a distant valley has been staged, for we are at most artistically caged. And there the wall of sound, the nightly wall, raised by a trillion crickets in the fall, impenetrable, halfway up the hill, I'd pause and thrall with their delirious trill. That's Dr. Sutton's light, that's the great bear, a thousand years ago five minutes were, equal to forty ounces of fine sand, outstare the stars, infinite foretime and infinite aftertime above your head. They closed like giant wings, and you were dead. The regular vulgarian, I dare say, is happier. He sees the Milky Way, only when making water. Then, as now, I walked at my own risk, whipped by the bow, tripped by the stump. Asthmatic, lame, and fat, I never bounced a ball or swung a bat. I was the shadow of the wax wing slain, by feigned remoteness in the window pane. I had a brain, five senses, one unique. But otherwise, I was a cloudish freak. In sleeping dreams, I played with other chaps, but really envied nothing, save, perhaps, the miracle of a lemon slate left upon wet sand by nonchalantly deft bicycle tires. A thread of subtle pain, tugged at by playful death, released again, but always present, ran through me. One day, when I'd just turned eleven as I'd lay, prone on the floor, and watched a clockwork toy, a tin wheelbarrow pushed by a tin boy, bypassed chair legs and stray beneath the bed, there was a sudden sunburst in my head. And then, black night, that blackness was sublime. I felt distributed through space and time. One foot upon a mountain top, one hand under the pebbles of a panting strand, one ear in Italy, one eye in Spain, in caves my blood and in the stars my brain. There were dull throbs in the Triassic, green, optical spots in upper Pleistocene, an icy shiver down my age of stone, and all tomorrows in my funny bone. During one winter every afternoon, I'd sink into that momentary swoon. And then it ceased. Its memory grew dim. My health improved. I even learned to swim. And like some little lad forced by a wench, with his pure tongue, her abject thirst to quench, I was corrupted, terrified, lured. And though old Dr. Colt pronounced me cured of what he said were mainly growing pains, the wonder lingers and the shame remains.